amigos and welcome to episode 19 of La Resurrección and we start the new season today and of course if you watched the last episode you will know this season is massive to be fair you don't even need to watch last episode spoilers if you there we qualified for the Champions League if we just have a quick reminder if we look at last season's table that was rather long-winded, but yes, we finished third ahead of Real Madrid, amazingly. So today we are going to have one game and then the Champions League draw, because it is only a few days away. We're playing on the Monday, Champions League draws on the Thursday. Now, already this introduction has been pretty spoiler-heavy, but if you don't follow me on Twitter, you may not know. I was offered the England job in the summer, as we can see, that took forever to load. Yes. I was offered the England job and I will show you why because we didn't have a great Euros, lost every game, got spanked by Sweden, didn't get out of the group, no points, so Southgate was sacked and I was the man that was offered the job. I put this out on Twitter, I didn't know whether to take it or not but the overwhelming response was yes, take the job, so I have. So I doubt I'll show you any England matches in this save but if it is something that you would like to see, then I might include some maybe extra episodes or something but uh yeah do let me know also i was named manager of the season last year for uh, malaga so that was a nice little accolade we actually um well i don't think it was us personally but actually allegri who was at real madrid got sacked didn't get even sniff of speculation linking me with a job you'd think i'd be a prime candidate but apparently not instead carlo ancelotti got the job Reading job was available as well. Tony Pulis was sacked, but they did get relegated to League One. So I didn't fancy uh, going from Champions League to League One. But anyway, I've rambled long enough. It is the summer still, just about. So signings have been made. There's only about a week left of the window. As it stands right now, I can't see much else going on, basically because we're now broke. I managed to up the transfer fee... Transfer fee... The Transfer kitty, that's what I'm trying to say. I managed to up that from six and a half million to about ten million. Um I sold some clauses and that, so it gave us a little bit more cash. And this is what we've done. So let's start with the outs. This isn't really notable. He never really played for us, but he's been in the B team for a long time. And we got a decent chunk of money for him. But Ivan Rodriguez has gone to Huesca. I believe are in the second division. They are indeed. So we got about six hundred K for him, so that wasn't too bad couple of free transfers there but if I show you uh, main transfers out the only person that's gone for money is Luis Hernandez he's gone to Valencia three million I think we got for him in total or well, that might have been before clauses 3.9 million after clauses he's getting on a bit and we've got Marcus Rocha so I thought that yeah he's okay but that's money that we can reinvest we've got a a definitely a capable replacement in Rocha so I was quite happy to let him go so Hernandez is the only player that's left permanently which is quite good unfortunately we weren't able to get George or Ross Barkley back neither were interested in loading them back to us so we were well out of price for them so unfortunately they haven't made a return other outs Jimmy Cabo's gone on loan to Osasuna Renato Santos had a fantastic end to his loan spell at the end of last season with Palermo. So he's going to get the nod over Jimmy Cabo. So Cabo's gone out on loan for the season. And uh, yeah, he's a good player. He's still fairly, well, it's not fairly young, but he's still got time on his side. So I don't want him to stagnate. So he, yeah, he's going to be getting first team football at Osasuna. Juan Carr, if you remember him, he's still knocking about. He's gone to Lagostera as well. Another season out on loan for him. Again, with three really good left wingers, he was never going to get in the team. But he's a good player to have around potentially in the future, so he's gone out on loan again as well. Bada Bularu, he's gone on loan again. We've got the emergence of Sanchez and Perez in the team last season. It would be silly for me to not keep them around, so Bularu wasn't going to get a look in. So he has gone loan, out on loan as well. He's joined Rodriguez at Huesca. And the last one, not really notable, but German Hernandez. He did have a fleet in appearance in the first team last season. He's gone to Villa Nevents. I'm going to go with that. But he's got a lot of promise. Still only 17, but I feel like if he gets a lot of football under his belt this season, then he could really come on leaps and bounds. 
So that's it in terms of outs. And I know you're dying to know about the ins, so let's get straight into it. The first one is our George replacement, Marcelo Hermes. He's not bad, is he? 25 years old. He's earning a fair bit. I'm not impressed with that, but solid star ratings across the board. Decent attributes, very well-rounded, nothing outstanding, but, you know, solid in areas that we need him to be. So hopefully he can be just as good as George. I doubt he will be, but here's hoping. Anyway, he came in from Sao Paulo for 4.2 million, previously of Benfica. But yeah, he's still, I'm quite happy with this because he's still a, like at a good age. So he might be able to improve slightly, but I think it's a really solid option. Next is Yvonne. She's dead nice. She's Swiss. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to working with her. In all seriousness though, I don't really know. I, I guess his name is Yvonne, but let's just call him Invogo. I was amazed when I brought this guy in how like good he is. Four and a half stars. He came from Young Boys. As you can see, only 3.3 million. He was previously of Leipzig. Then went to the Young Boys for 230k. Had an incredible season there, and we've paid, I mean, I think that's a bargain. All right, yeah, we've paid them more than 10 times what they paid for. But as a solid option, 26, he's not played for Switzerland yet. He is Swiss, yeah, it's just double-checking. But this guy, I'm. we've got a number one. I'd be amazed if Kellyanne plays much this season. But you know what I'm like with rotation, so... Vogo probably won't even play that much, but yeah, a really solid goalkeeper, and I think that's going to be imperative going forward into this Champions League campaign. Got another left back, Antonio Luna. He may be familiar to some of you. Previous of Villa, albeit he only played 17 games. He did score a goal though. He's a bit of a Spanish German journeyman. Started at Sevilla, spells at Ibar, Levante, and now we've picked him up again. Another solid option, similar to Hermes. But that was one area that with George gone, we were really lacking. He come in dirt cheap, only 2.3 million. Wages again on a rotation. He wanted a lot. He is 29, so he is going to be Hermes' backup. But a really solid option. and just strengthens the defence. One last signing, Gideon Young. I was a bit underwhelmed with this. He came in really hotly rated from the scouts. So I took a punt on him. He is only here on loan, thankfully. Two and a half star. Three and a half star potential, but he is 25, so... Yeah, I was a bit underwhelmed. I thought he was going to be a decent addition, but he's probably going to be a backup, to be honest. Got him on loan from Hamburg for the season, where he's spent a long, long time. Hasn't really played for them that much. So he's just going to provide cover, I think, as a centre-half. But he's got good versatility. He can play defensive midfield and centre midfield. So it's a good option to have. So that, ladies and gents, is all our business. Loaded of youngsters have gone out on loan, but nothing notable. So in terms of money, no transfer budget, two grand in wages. I was trying to wangle another loan deal, but the best ones, they all want like a serious contribution to their wages. So it's unlikely to happen at this point, unless there's any madness towards the end of the window. So now you're all caught up, transfers, other business going on. We have a game today. Real Sociedad at home to open the account for the season. And this is the team that I'm going to go with. I clicked on the wrong button. There we go. So, Yvonne's going to make her debut in goal. I'm sorry. I know it's a really bad joke, but it's just going to remain. What are all these? Oh, okay. So, just check it. All, all of these lot come to me in the summer. So, we need to strengthen the defence. And we have. But apparently, it's still not good enough. Anyway, Vogo in goal. Rocha at right back. Hermes at left back. Flavio Ramos and Raul Rodriguez are going to be our centre-backs. I think that's probably the partnership that I'm going to favour now. I know Lombard had that bad injury at the end of the last season and it sort of had quite a detrimental effect to his ability and his stats. So he's probably going to take more of a back seat. I think I actually took the captaincy off him this season. I uh, don't know how you see... Oh, no, wait. Go back. Captains, yeah. So I gave the captaincy to Roland. Lombard's still vice-captain. But Roland's going to see some good first-team action this season. 25 as well, so he's going to be in and around the team for a while. Roland is going to start today. He partners Sanchez in the midfield. I'm really hoping that Sanchez, the form that he had at the end of last season, I'm really hoping he can carry on with that this season. 
I think him and Roland will be a really solid partnership. We have still got Adrian Gonzalez. He's gotten on a bit now, though. I think he's about 33, so it might be probably, may well be his last season. And we've got Palio Perez knocking around as well. Kiko is going to be right winger. As I said, we've got Renato Santos in the squad now. That is going to be Kiko today. Juan P in the number 10. He's going to get his chance again now that there's no more Ross Barkley. But credit to Juan P. He didn't complain about a lack of action. And he's still, I think he's still a cracking player. So really pleased that he's just going to kick on now. Pacheco, unbelievable last season, wasn't he really? He was the man, I think the unsung hero of our of our season last year and Wilfred Boney is going to start up top I've continued with the deep line forward role for now that could well change if nothing happens in terms of the bench Kellyanne Luna Lomban Muller Johnny Renato Santos and Michael Santos other players in the squad this is just a backup goalkeeper Cardi Barre is back he's going to be Juan P's backup as he was in the second division Robles the right back that's got really good potential he is going to be understudy to Marcus Rocha. Perez, as I said before, he's not going out on loan. Sorry, lads. Hoyos as well. And Gideon Young. So that is our squad for the season. That is our team for today. Here's hoping we start this season off with a bang. Just having a look at the Sociedad team. Fabian Delph is in their team. Signed to them permanently as well, interestingly. And our former player, Diego Gonzalez. He's already had another move since Celta Vigo. So, a former player coming back. They've got a couple of debuts. Really still in goal somehow on their bench. Charlie Mazonda, formerly of Chelsea. Oh, he's alone from Chelsea. Well, there you go. But uh, only a couple of debuts for us today. But yeah, really hoping that we can start this season off with a bang. And let's say, go out and give the fans their money's worth. They don't give a monkey's. So, the games begin. And although we are at home... We're playing in our away kit for some reason, which is a bit annoying. But yeah, we are the later kickoff. We are on the Monday. There is another game today as well. But majority of other teams have played already. Interestingly, as Yanazai gets injured, that's always good. Um, our pre-season prediction, we're predicted to finish 13th again. And I find that a bit insulting, to be honest. The board want minimum top half finish. I said to the players, let's try and get Europa League. Yeah, we're going to be in for an interesting season, but they wrote us off last year. Look how well we did. So hopefully we can continue that trend going forward. The 20 minutes gone in this game and nothing notable has happened at the moment. I'm really looking forward to this Champions League draw. Sanchez has picked up a knock. We'll leave him on for now. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Champions League draw to test us against some of the best teams in Europe. I imagine we'll be pot four. So that means we'll get the hardest group. But I fancy us. No, I don't fancy us to qualify. The board only want us to get to the group stage. And we get there automatically. So there's no more expectation. I don't want us to be humiliated. And we've seen we can, you know, pit our wits against the best teams in La Liga. As we get our first highlight of the game with 10 minutes to go before half time. But yeah, as I said, okay, we lost twice to Barca last year, but we picked up a point off, off La Atletico, Jesus words. And last season we got four points off of Real Madrid, so we can certainly do it. Wilfred, what a strike. Had my concerns about the position, and what a goal to silence me. Boney has just hit that. Really, he's a cracking goalkeeper, but he's never saving that. He does well just to peel off on the edge. All the space hits it first time. Really, he's never getting there. What an unbelievable start for Wilfred Boney's season, and I hope it continues in this fashion. But it looks like that is going to be the only action. Maybe not. Juan P, Flavio Ramos at a far stick. Rodriguez is actually the one that gets the header in, but it's comfortable for Ruli. And the highlight's going to continue. Rocha picks up the aimless kick. Can we build something from the back? We go all the way back to Yvonne. And Vogo, same player. Don't know what you're rambling about, mate. Juan P. Roll on now. Flavio Ramos. So a bit limited on options. Hermes, though. Inside to Juan P. Pacheco. We're building well. We're being patient. Inside to Wilfred. Sanchez has got space. He hits one. That's a good save from Ruli. Would have been disappointed to be beaten from range once again as Juan P. knocks in the corner. Roland's there. 
heads it down and is cleared. Santos goes for the long shot. A bit of a scramble. Now Sociedad could break on a swan me. Oh, Rocha brings him down. Apparently there was no foul. That looked like a clear and obvious foul to me. But nevertheless, a good first half from us. We seem to be in control. They still don't care about the fans, which is a little bit worrying. Also, speaking of fans, well, this kind of ties in. Uh, apparently, well, I went to our board and asked for our stadium to be expanded. And they agreed to it. There is planning going ahead. But I don't know if they're actually going to confirm the expansion. I believe it's just a planning stage at the moment. It's nothing massive. It's only going to add sort of five or 6,000 more seats. But even so, that will take us above 30,000. And I think that's good for Champions League. As Invogo manages to... I think that was Invogo. The way it came up in commentary suggested that Invogo made the save. There's probably a bit of crossbar in there as well. But nevertheless, we remain ahead in the game and now Sanchez is proper injured which is never good especially as we haven't got an actual sense of midfielder which is a little bit concerning so this is what I've concocted unorthodox but I've moved the wingers deeper just to give Roland a little bit of support hopefully this sort of Christmas tree will uh, be effective that's really annoying that I put three wingers on the bench and not a central midfielder. That is so stupid. But I did pick this team a long time ago. I haven't played this save for a little while. The last video did come out just under a week ago, so it's been a little while. Of course, the winter update is now out. That came out over the weekend, so I hope you're all enjoying that. I've started a, another offline save with my beloved Reading now that we've got all the good loan players. But Sociedad, the only team looking threatening, Raul Rodriguez did really well to control that cross, how hard it was thundered in. But yeah, Sociedad have looked like the only team threatening in this second half. But Kiko has gone on a mad one. He's been brought down. He's going over to VAR. But it seemed a bit of an odd highlight because it was just a run that ended in a challenge and nothing happened. So, it's gone to VAR. What is the decision? There's no foul. That was a waste of everybody's time then, wasn't it, really? 25 minutes to go. I want a bit more of a solid showing. So, Shadad, as I said, I've looked the only likely team in this second half. But, you know, if we can grind out a result, that would be a good start nonetheless. Three points... It's three points no matter how you get it. That was expertise, football analysis there. I deserve to be on match of the day for that sort of thing. I'm even studying sports journalism. And if I'm throwing out that sort of insight now, I'm a shoo-in for, I'm a shoo -in for the top. There's no doubt about it. But little has happened in this second half. Oh, my pop filter has just gone on a mind of its own. But we have a chance. Wilfred, whose goal is the difference so far. Pacheco, Muller, we work it nicely. There was space for Juan P in the middle, but we couldn't find him. Muller now, can he get a ball in? She's blocked, but it falls Pacheco. Oh, Roland was in space on the edge. And we've messed around with it. And now Sociedad come forward. I can see this being a goal. What a ball to Charlie Masonda. Oh, okay. I thought that was going to be a foul. It looked like someone went in on him there. He's trying to sneaky, sneakily get the ball into the back of the net from a tight angle. But Vogo makes a save. But it's not over yet. Ramos away. There's a free man there. He needs to be marked. So he has about Masonda. I thought he was going to pass to Masonda, but he's offside. The shot comes in. And it's not brilliant, it has to be said. I'm just going to knock this down, I think, to cautious to try and kill the game off. Right. I've just pretty much sweated this game out. And they still got, I guarantee they'll score now. They've been threatening all second half. And they've piled players forward. Muller, that header away is going to be poor. I knew it was going to be. I've seen that a million times before. They've got just under a minute. A good ball out to Zaldu on the wing. Into Masonda. Kiko heads away. Rosario, long shot. Vogo with the save. He's already proven that 3.3 million was an absolute bargain. Masonda with a corner. Whips in Rosario. His header too cute for his liking 
and it will trickle away and there we go the one nil victory it was less than convincing but nevertheless I seem to say that word a lot I notice in editing that I seem to say nevertheless quite a lot maybe you should get that on a t-shirt I was about to say it again then but at the end of the day Wilfred Boney's screamer has won us the game well done lads good win for us we did well to sort of survive the late pressure Right, I've got an England squad to pick, and then we will be back for the Champions League draw, so I will see you for that. Right, this is it. As I expected, we will be fourth seed for the draw. Just going to show you my England squad. Just, just so you, uh, just, 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 just because I don't know really where I was going with that. But yeah, a few notable mentions. Harry Maguire is still at Leicester. I find that bizarre. Jamal Lascelles. He's now plays at Man City. He's been doing well. Chalaba, to be fair. Who else as well? Uh, Sessegnon hasn't won a cap yet, which really surprises me. Andrus Townsend is in there. He's played well so far. Jaden Sancho as well hasn't won a cap yet. I found that remarkable. Nevertheless, most of the usual suspects that you would expect. So, uh, yeah, just thought I'd show you that. But anyway, Champions League draw. So if we have a look, top seeds. I mean, obviously we're hoping for CSKA. Can't go Barcelona, thank goodness for that. Tottenham are in the first seed. That's pretty impressive. Second seed is Madrid, City, PSG, Atletico. I mean, that's not really fair. Bayern Leverkusen, probably the ones you want out of that. Third seed, I mean, that's strong as well. Dortmund, Benfica, Schalke. And then fourth seed, some pretty small teams in there, to be fair. Krasnodar, both Milan teams are in there, interestingly. AK Athens, Bruges. Yeah, this is um this is gonna be difficult. So let's draw it. Let's not hang around any longer. All three English teams coming out first. So Arsenal PSG, Liverpool Atletico, Spurs Real, Barca Napoli, Juve Bayer, CSK Porto, Bayern United, Monaco City. Well, I'm looking at Group F. That's probably the most favourable one at the moment. Let's do another round. Arsenal, PSG, Shakhtar. Liverpool, Atletico, Kiev, Spurs. Oh my god, that's the same as this year, isn't it? Spurs, Real, Dortmund. No, last year. That's... La oh, I can't remember. Either way, that's a tough group. Barca, Napoli, Schalke, Juve, Bayer, Lyon. I'm still looking at Group F. That's where we want to be. Bayern United at Benfica. Poor old Ajax. Right, this is us. We want Group F. Oh, AC Milan, interesting. We can't go in Group B. Club Bruges. Can't go in this group either, thank goodness, because of Madrid. Real Salzburg. Can't go in this group either because of Barcelona. Krasnodar. This one isn't bad. I'd take this one. That's preferable, but that one... It's not the worst. Bars are right. It's on. Group F. Come on. Malaga. Yeah. Come on. I actually, like, I'm fairly confident, you know. I, I, I wouldn't say we'll win the group, but I'm, I reckon we could sneak out of it, you know. AK Athens go into that group. And then it's completed by Inter Milan. So, that's not bad. I mean, that is, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm dead chuffed with that. Porto, Besiktas and CSKA Moscow. We can he sniff at that, boys and girls, if you're watching. Don't want to be, don't want to be uh, sexist. I just tried asking for more wage and or transfer budget as well. Considering we're now considered a rich club, they still said no. Yao Felix, wonder kid of the Liverpool save, he's gone to Barcelona. So if we just push through these then, so the Champions League games have now been arranged when do we come back? That is the question. I've got to show you a Champions League game, right? Let's do... Let's do Villarreal and Porto. That's a decent chunk of games. We've already played one game at home to CSKA. If we can win that game, that is mahoosive. So, yeah, let's do Villarreal and Porto. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, guys, that is going to be it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you're pumped just as much as I am for the start of this Champions League season. Just noticed that, well, 
that I didn't tell you about. We beat Juventus in a friendly, albeit Juventus did play not the greatest side, but still plenty of decent players in there. So we can take on anyone. But yeah, like I said, that is going to be it. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. Just wanted to say, I had a look at some analytics today. We've now, now hit the, well, we've got more subscribers now, so we're now at our new highest total. And the first episode of the Malaga C series has now got over 100 views, so I just wanted to take the chance to say thank you to all of you for the continued support. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'll hopefully bring you some regular content going forward, guys, especially with this season. I am excited to see how we do. That is going to be it from me. I've said that like three times now. I really need to shut up. Adios.